Youth, we bless God for tonight. We appreciate the Lord for bringing us here one more time in these times. And today is a wonderful Saturday. We are on with our COVID-19 series for the youth ministry. And we want to welcome you all to this very important program. We are grateful to God and I trust that this discussion is going to be a blessing to you. Today we are handling a topic. And the topic is choosing your entertainment right. Choosing your entertainment right. You know, um, these are days where people are so stressed up from work, stressed up from the issues of life. And so everybody wants to be entertained in one way or the other. But we want to find out as believers, as Christians... Um, which kind of entertainment does the Bible allow us to get involved in? And which other ones are we admonished by the word of God not to get involved in? So we are going to be discussing choosing your entertainment right as a believer, as a child of God. And I know it's going to be a blessing to you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise and the glory for tonight. Thank you for gathering us here. Thank you for all our viewers. We ask that, Lord, you brood over us Cause us, O oh God, to, to expound your mysteries, things that will be of benefit to many, things that will edify your people, that at the end of this meeting, we will encounter you like never before. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. We appreciate the Lord um, to help us go through that discussion. We have two very wonderful people in our midst. The first is Elder Rexford. Asamoa Beidu, the district youth leader for the Church of Pentecost, Nungwa. He's a financial analyst or a risk analyst by profession. Elder, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Yes. And then we also have Mrs. Eunice Yeboa, uh, who is the youth secretary um, for PRWC Graceland and also a law student at the University of Cape Coast. Um, Woman of God, you're welcome. Thank you. Mama. Great. So these are the two uh, wonderful people who will be joining us to have this discussion on choosing your entertainment right. And so without uh, much ado, I want to get into it and then we discuss what is entertainment? What should we do? Uh, stay glued to your seat. Uh, we are on Facebook Live via the Youth Ministry page. And then we are also transmitting live on the Mix LR app. And so if you go to mixlr.com forward slash PRWC Graceland, you can also have the opportunity to hear what we are sharing with you. Um, the online radio affords us the opportunity to hear what we are doing here at a minimal cost. And so we want you to uh, hook on and let's discuss this subject. Elder, um, let's start with you. Anyway, how has the let's how has the the period been? How has the COVID nineteen been uh, since? Has it affected your work? It has not really affected our work because uh, we are able to work remotely, and we were doing that before the outbreak. So that's just more of working remotely than working uh, in the office space. So I'd say no, probably our business because most of our customers also have been impacted by this virus. But as to the work that we do, we have not. I think we are fine. Great. What about Eunice? Yeah. Mrs. Yabua, how is it? How is the, the, the COVID-19 treating you? I think um, it's cool. By God's grace, we've started an online education. So we are schooling at home. And then in addition, um, it's giving me the opportunity to learn new skills being at home. And so I'm actually enjoying my stay home, but we pray it ends soon so that we can go back to school. Great, great. And so um, we want to encourage you, before we start the whole session, we want to encourage you to observe all the precautionary measures. As you can see, we have, we have physically distanced ourselves, not only socially, but physically. Uh, socially, we are born together, but physically we are uh, distanced. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we are making sure we are sanitizing the items we are using here, where possible, we wash our hands uh, with soap and the running water. Um, then, if not for the fact that when we speak, you might not hear us, we would have had our face masks on. And so we want to encourage you to do that in this season. We trust that the God of peace will help us. So, Adam, 
Um, what is entertainment? When we talk about entertainment, what, what does it entail? Uh, not to be academic about what entertainment is. I would take it as anything that amuses you. So if you're having fun or you have fun from anything, then I, I'd say you're having entertainment. The business side is out of this amusement, whatever you part ways with. So if it's about money, it's about time, uh, then there's a whole gamut of entertainment. Anything that entertains you, it could be music, it could be music, it could be movies, it could be sport, it could be just even going onto the social media. Anything that would amuse you, take time off and you're fine. So that's entertainment in totality. Great. Mrs. Yabua. Okay. I will take mine from the Cambridge Dictionary. I define entertainment as a public show, a performance, or ways, various ways of enjoyment. So like our elder Riley said, anything that amuses you. Yeah, so that is what entertainment is all about. That's all entertainment. So anything that amuses you, that excites you. So it means if it's not exciting, it's not entertaining, right? Uh, I'd say it, it's not to you. Okay. Because if it's not amusing to me, then it's not entertaining me. Okay. So once it entertains you, yes. So for everything that we, we would call entertainment, if it is not even entertaining you, a section of the public is being entertained. Okay. For you know, I'm not, I may not be a fan of comedy, but the moment I find myself in a place where comedy is being sold and people are laughing, those people are being entertained, whilst probably I'm not being entertained, but entertainment is still going on. Okay. So, I mean, anything that amuses you, that makes you happy, yeah. that excites you, is a form of entertainment, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Mrs. Yabua, what are, what are some of the, the forms of entertainment okay. um, for, for our, our young viewers? Because it's a youth ministry, what are some of the forms of entertainment uh, that we find ourselves or that uh, beckon on us in our generation? So, we have um, various forms, but... I'll limit it to three for the purposes of our discussion. We have a popular or the family type of entertainment. That one is the basic entertainment at home where you share jokes with your family, husband and wives, brothers and sisters, or among a family. That one is the popular one. We play Ludo at home or Wari or something we shared, jokes we shared to amuse ourselves. And then we have the corporate form. The corporate form is a strategy used by businesses where they used to advertise their products to customers. Here, they make sure that their, advert their advertisement is full of entertaining videos or entertainment such that you can get more customers on board. So that is the corporate type of entertainment used by the corporate world. And then I will limit the last one to the entertainment industry itself. They are actually into entertainment. Here we have the, those into movie, sports, the music industry, all those various forms, that is the various form of entertainment we find ourselves in. So the various movies we watch out there, the music, dance shows, comedy, like our brother said, they form part of the entertainment industry, the last form of entertainment. So like rightly said, we have three different forms of entertainment, the family or, or popular one, then we have the corporate, and the last one is the entertainment industry, where the all forms of entertainment are encompassed. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, I've just been alerted that uh, the viewer said they want to see your face into the, into the camera, so <laughs> maybe he, he will do well to, to okay. address them. So you would do well to look into the camera and then address them very well. I would trust that it's, it's, okay. it's going to be great. Yes. So, um, Elder, do you, would you want to add something? Any uh, forms? She's talked about uh, personal kind of entertainment, corporate, and then the entertainment industry yeah. itself. Do, would you want to add something? Any, any other form of entertainment? Yes, uh, I would still, because of the purposes of our discussion, I'll limit it to the three that she's mentioned. But it's a strand that weaves through. So you take the whole business, the business side of entertainment, where we have the movie, we have the music, we have the other things that come together to more or less generate revenue for them with the, the, the business 
it runs through. So from there, it's the same strategy that the corporates are using. Because without the music or the movies, which gives or generates money in the industry, the corporate people will not fall on it. When you come to our homes, when you take the personal ones, like the ones that you can do without any capital intensive uh, investment, like movies, you do the Ludo, you do the Wari, most of our families, let me even use this COVID uh, period, you spend more time behind the telly. So that is just feeding from the top where they are making money. So from the three, you realize that the mediums through which entertainment drives are all being exhibited through the three that she's made mention of music, movies. Uh, now, social media is a whole thing on its own. So music, movie, probably social me uh, media uh, Great. channels. Great. Thank you so um, we have seen we have seen that there are there are different forms of entertainment, but you know, as Christians, we, we now come into a context as Christians. Um, you know, when we're in school those days, uh, a Christian, you don't go for entertainment. Usually, we used to do entertainment on Saturdays in senior high school. You don't go for entertainment because it's worldly. Now, I want to find out. Um, Mrs. Yeboa, um, can a Christian, I, I mean, is it good for a Christian to, to seek to be entertained? Is it Christian to, to want or to desire to be entertained? Is it, or let me, let me put it this way, so two, two folds. Is it Christian to desire to be entertained? Then is it also Christian to get into something that entertains people? Is it Christian? Okay. I'll say that it is not a sin at all. From my view, I think that entertainment is not a sin. And so I believe that God encourages us to have a balanced life as Christians. That entertainment is good for us because as Christians, sometimes we are stressed from our activities. And then a form of entertainment helps relax us. What is the problem is the choice or the kind of entertainment we resort to as Christians to entertain us. So I would say that it's not good, it's not wrong at all for a Christian to be entertained or one desire to be entertained or to be even in a form of entertainment. Because I, I made a research and then you realize that the youth of, this, um, the youth of today actually wants enjoy programs where they go and even the preacher even share a joke or a comedy whilst preaching. So you realize that entertainment is an essential part of even service now and in our world today. So it is not a sin at all. Okay, so it's not a sin. Yes. For a Christian to, um, you, want to you want to be entertained, you want to rejoice. And Eric Swan, what do you think about that? Uh, she, she said something about the choice. It is not a sin. Uh, if we define entertainment as anything that amuses you, in this stressful world that we are, I think one of the stress relievers has just been uh, entertained and relieved. But the choice, as she rightly mentioned, uh, if you are a Christian, you should be careful about the choices you make when it comes to the entertainment that you would want to have. So it's, for me, it's the choice. Okay. As to a Christian being part of it, uh, for this year, when you look at even our church, the Church of Pentecost, we being part movers and shakers of things that go around us. We are supposed to be agents of transformation. Right. I'm just imagining if we all say we are not going to be part of this entertainment world that we are in, it is going to be a big problem. I'll use an artist like Kanye West. And when we were talking about SS, yes, as I was cool, but uni, I, I wasn't part of Pensa. Uh, uni, I fell away. But it was uni that we, we discovered the likes of Kanye now, Kanye went into the world. He's back. And he's doing something in America that is so profound. He comes to your church. He sings. Now, let's look at what has happened. Kanye was in the world and had a lot of following, even through his marriage. So now, when Kanye stands up and talks about Christ, you have a lot of people listening than previously. When Christians were listening. Now, Kanye has a total spectrum. People he was with in the world or people who were listening to him when he was a worldly rapper. Now he's a Christian. So sometimes I look at what influence the person can make. When I became a Christian, I stopped listening to Kanye. 
But the moment I heard Kanye was back, I started listening to some of the songs. And the concerts that he was holding, big concerts, you realize that the choice of entertainment comes to play. He's singing gospel songs, and he's winning over even some of those who are in the secular world. So it's a choice that matters, not... Uh, so the choice that matters, and not really the subject of entertainment. Uh, yes. uh, since you brought in Kanye, so would you say that um, sometimes God would make someone very worldly so that they can get a crowd and then later repent? Would you... Do you agree to that? Uh, Chief Oweka said he's in Asabuakwa. Mm -hmm. The man knows the end from the beginning. Okay. Uh, so sometimes, like Paul, I see Kanye as a musical Paul in our generation. Because when you look at where he went, a point in time he was even denouncing Christ. Somebody was brought up in the church. You know, when you look at most of these artists and even a trend that runs even in, in Ghana, most of them started from the church. And a point in time, they left. I think even some of us, I... Uh, an elder's son, and I left. I went to rap. I was this. Then you come back. Not everybody came back. But when you have Kanye coming back, when he was in the world, there were so many people he interacted with. And maybe God in his own wisdom. Now, Kanye is back. When he started, people said, oh, he wasn't going to do anything. Wakwaba, he will go back again. But he has stood the test of time. So we can say that probably God took him into the world. So that when he's coming, he will draw the people from the world. So God in his own wisdom probably might have done that with Kanye. Yeah, that's, that's very controversial. Well, <laughs> uh, it's quite controversial anyway. So um, um, let's, let's look at what, what are some of the scriptural foundations for entertainment? I mean, um, Mrs. Yeboa, let's, uh, any, any scripture that comes to mind, anything in the word of God that comes to mind about entertainment, um, would you think, do you say that um, entertainment has some scriptural foundations? Well, there's no specific scripture. Okay, per my research, I didn't find any scripture that spoke about entertainment being right or wrong. However, I would like to say that when you check the Bible, when you look at Judges chapter 7, and then when Gideon was going to war with his people, with the soldiers, and then God told Gideon that the he, the soldiers he had were too many and that if he grants them if they get victory from their enemies they are going to say that it was because they had a large army that is why they had won the battle God told Gideon that he has to separate the people from verse 5 of chapter 7 of Judges you realize the Bible said that Gideon asked them to go and drink from the river there Bible said that some of the soldiers as they were drinking there were some people who knelt down and were actually taking the water. And there were some people who capped the water like this and were sipping it like a dog, like that. And then Bible explained that from the inspiration I got from that scripture, you realize that those who actually knelt down because they were being entertained from the water, the pleasure. You know, entertainment is a form of pleasure and amusement. Because of the entertainment they were deriving from the water, they forgot who they actually were. They, they stopped acting like soldiers, soldiers who had to be alert and prepared for battle. So those people were actually taxed to go back home. And those people who stayed alert, capped, and even sipping the water, enjoying the sweetness of the water, still stayed alert. When you check the Bible, in Proverbs 25, verse 16, the Bible says that Solomon said, if you find any, it's just enough too much of it and you will vomit so you realize that the foundation for the inspiration here that even though entertainment is very good for us as believers if you take too much of it you it is not going to help your system it's not going to help your spiritual growth because too much of it and you'll be taking the chaffs even as well so from the gibeon night story i just shared with the soldiers you realize that the other half who actually knelt and took the water by kneeling down, lost focus because of the pleasure and the entertainment they were deriving from their water. So I would say that because of the pleasure from this biblical explanation, I would say that because of the pleasure, God actually asked them to go back because they were not actually ready for the battle then. So even my biblical foundation is that entertainment is good, but if you don't take care and you are not alert 
like the other white soldiers, let me call them all prepared soldiers or soldiers alert, on alert. Like us as Christians, we are supposed to be ready at all times. We are soldiers and we are supposed to be alert. If you lose focus, entertainment can actually drive you from purpose can actually lead you astray and can actually make you miss God's actual plan for your life. Like Elder rightly said, when Kanye actually missed the way where God actually wanted him to be and even his own personal testimony, he went back to the world and then he came back. So I would say that from the inspiration I got from this scripture, um, entertainment from biblical perspective even though it is good, from Proverbs 25 verse 16, okay. too much of it, of it can, too much of it okay. can actually... That's when entertainment becomes an addiction. It turns into a kind of addiction. Yeah. You, you, are, you are taking too much, too much of it. Wow. That's powerful. So the, the soldiers in the time of Gideon, they knelt down. Yes. And they were enjoying the water. And that was a criteria for disqualifying them. Because there's a battle there and you are just drinking and enjoying it. You're entertaining yourself. Someone said life is not a fanfare. It's a warfare. And so if you let the fanfare aspect, the fanfare aspect take too much of you, then you are going to get into trouble. Elder, any, any, any scriptural, any other scripture that was powerful? Um, Mrs. Any, I would any say other? anything that takes, takes you away from God, anything that takes you away from God uh, becomes an idol to you. Anything that takes you away from God becomes an idol. So if it becomes too much, and for me, a lot, everything about the Bible talks about even entertainment. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Your thanksgiving could be through poems. It could be through singing. Uh, this morning, our apostle took me through the Psalms. And those times, they used to sing it. That is entertainment. I will liken it to the parable of the rich fool in Luke chapter 12 where this man had money and said, and God from heaven looked at him and said, uh, stupid man, <laughs> I'll take your soul away from you. You see, too much of it. This is a man who had hit his jackpot. And in hitting the jackpot, he felt, uh, that's what we have. And I think that is what we, we are seeing in our, in our youth now. Too much of the entertainment, too much of the movies, too much of the music. The more we have too much of that, then you realize that once those things are being magnified, then the Christ in us is being diminished. Or there is a, a, a minimization, if there is any word like okay. that. It goes just down. Okay. So biblically, that is what I would take. Right. So we should, it shouldn't be too much. Yeah. So what about someone who, who gets entertained with um, reading? Reading yes. the Bible. You know, you know, those things can also become an entertainment. There are people who get entertained by prayer. I mean, once they pray, prayer becomes the entertainment. There are those who get entertained by um, good things. Yeah. Can, can, you, can you also be that those good things, Mrs. Yabua, those good things, can you also be that they also, um, they can also, too much of a good thing can become bad. Is it, is it also true? Yes, please. Okay. Like from the same scripture I read. Yes. I, am, I would like to take it again. Proverbs 25 verse 16. If you find any, it's just enough. Too much of it, you vomit. And then as Christians, we are here on earth. We should not forget that. You need to have a balanced life. You know, some people as, live their life such that a part of their life is suffering. You can see someone who watched television the whole day, like Pastor said. You can even, and you, read, you watch television the whole day, you can draw your plans such that you, you didn't even have your quiet time. You didn't, have, you didn't pray. You didn't read a book or learn something new in a day. And you, you will say, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. Tomorrow, the following day, you go through the same cycle. So here, it, it, it means that one part, is, one part aspect of your life is suffering, either spiritually or physically. So you should, you should have a balanced life. As you are feeding your spirits, and feeding yourself with the word of God, wisdom from God's word, as we are deriving from God's word, we have to apply it and leave it practically. That we need to also plan our life here on earth. This year, our theme as a church is possessing the nations. If you are not built up as a Christian, if you are not built up as a youth, a young Christian youth, 
a young lady, a young man. You cannot seek up the world in future. That's our youth. We need to challenge ourselves that we will not, we will live a balanced life. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. That we are encouraged to have a balanced life in all we do. So right. our Bible study life, our prayer life, our education, our personal development, it should be balanced at that in all aspects of your life, when we see you, you are growing in all aspects. All you shouldn't aspects. be growing in only your spiritual life and then your social life is suffering. It's suffering. Okay. Yes. So we need to strike a balance. I mean, um, anything that amuses you, you need to make sure you balance it up with so many things. Uh, I remember those days when we um, were in school. You know, you can, you can get so excited, so, so, so excited about something that it becomes your entertainment and then robs you of doing other equally important things. And um, that is very important. Elda, well, what are, I want to find out. Someone enjoys um, sports betting. I mean, weekend entertainment. He's a Christian, the person speaks in tongues, and then all that, but it's just a game. It's just like, it's just a game. Well, we'll come to that. Um, we'll come to the issue of boxing. We'll pick just a few ones. Um, how do you see that? The issue of sports betting. Now, I brought in boxing to, to just to communicate the point that um, there's an argument that why should you get excited about two people who have not offended each other but because of money, we get into a ring and just start hitting themselves and then hitting one another. Is that entertainment? Should we watch it? Now, let's go to uh, betting, sports betting. What do you think? Is it, is it right? Is it right for a Christian to be involved? A child of God, he, he bets. I mean, it's just like he's just enjoying himself and then all that. What do you think? The moment you said sports betting and I said in my head, hey, wins or <laughs> <laughs> Sports betting, let's take the sports out as betting. Betting, yeah. betting as, as a Christian, I don't think betting is good. Betting is not scriptural and betting is a sin for me. Uh, life is not a gamble. You have to work hard at it. So if I'm to justify sports betting, then I would have to also justify NLE. Uh, Luto, because these are all games of chances. So for me, sports betting, but you see, sports betting has a subtle effect, which unfortunately has caught up with our youth. So you, 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 our youth are robbed in through what they found to be entertainment, which is sports. I'm a Liverpool fan, waiting forward to be crowned as the champions <laughs> of Europe. So you get in because you love your football club. And the passion with which you follow your club, now all you are just being thrown in is, oh, just put some coins on, just to, if you have faith in your club, let's see how your club would fare. And I think that is the genesis of betting. So you realize that in as much as betting has been with us for a very long time, within five years, there has been a surge in so many of the sporting firms. For me as a Christian, if you want to enjoy that entertainment bit, for me, I love sports. Stick to it. That is where when we started about the amusement, we brought in choices. If you don't have your choices right, before you realize the subtle way of the devil, which he puts in, will draw you away. So, so you, you, you think, um, you, you believe it's wrong, right? Very wrong. It's a, it's a sin. A very big no, sin. So someone is saying, prove it. What shows it's a sin? I mean, which, uh, which part of it is sinful? This is, a, this is exciting. I mean, it's, it's just like someone said, it's just like going to write exams. I mean, you write and then you are waiting for the results. Just if it comes well, fine. If it doesn't come well, that's okay. What, what, I mean, prove it. What, what, what is wrong about it? Okay, let me start from the top. Any yes. student who goes into an examination waiting for the results to come, it's either, it's either he went into the examination room not so prepared, so he's left everything to chance. He has written, and whatever he has written is what would be marked and given to him. Now, let me just oppose the word betting. Betting... The foundation of betting is greed, which the Bible speaks against. Because you don't put in five CDs hoping to get one million. It is not a business that makes sense. 
So anybody who tells me this argument, let me stretch it. A gentleman asked me that, have I ever tried a U.S. visa lottery before? And I said yes. Were you an officer of the church? I said yes. And he said, that is also betting. <laughs> he caught me there. The thing is, anything that you leave to chance, and for me, maybe I'll come back with before the show ends, I'll give you a scriptural back end. Okay. But betting is a thing. Okay. Once lottery or a game of lotto is a thing, betting falls on all feet, on okay. all four. Okay. Mrs. <laughs> well, Edu Yeboah, what do you think about that? He reminded me of an experience. I think I also applied for the American lottery. And then one guy asked me that, as a Christian, I and I'm, uh, as a woman of God, is it good? And the I American was like, lottery, right? yes. And I was like, oh, it is an initiative by developing countries to help, by the developed country to help the developing countries to also come to their country and so benefit you from to, there. You wanted to go and live in America, right? No, I'm just asking. No, <laughs> since, since you applied, I'm just asking. You wanted to go and live in America. Oh, yeah. Not out, out, okay, for some time. For some time. Yes, please. Okay. So, then you leave us in Ghana. <laughs> anyway, continue. So I, I was actually trying to find out why the person think it was a thing. But I, 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 for my, for my research with the American lottery, I think it is an initiative by developed countries just to help developing countries get access to some of their resources today. So for me, that one is not a thing. Yes, but with gambling and lotto, all that, sports betting, for me, I think it's not right. Because if a Christian is actually found in that, if you've noticed, most of the time we have um, a FIFA, we have a match, or those Manchester, I'm actually not into football. And then if you realize that one team wins, like Liverpool. Liverpool wins the match. <laughs> Most of the time, people get drunk over excitement. There are accidents in town. So many things happen. And then someone can bet with his, his or her life savings. And maybe that particular team actually wins and he cannot give the money back. There are a whole lot of advantages okay. and disadvantages to, to that. So personally, I wouldn't encourage any Christian to be part of such an activity since it's not even selling saying any good thing about you and, and where and you are that. coming from yes please okay now let me let me just clarify this you know there is a lottery lottery is not a sin okay. gambling is a sin okay. now not all lotteries are involve gambling now, for instance, lottery comes from lot, you know, just like when the disciple, you, you cast a lot. Yeah. And so it's just like um, a company is recruiting, recruiting people. They need 10 people. You apply. You apply. You have, you have cast in a lot. Yes. So you have applied. Now, it goes through the selection process. That's different. But you see, when it comes to where you have to put in money to get a bigger amount of money, you have to put in money to get a bigger amount of money. Then, you see, the, the principle there is greed. And these are things people need to... Immediately you raise people say, what about American lottery? American lottery is like applying for a job. That is, I mean, you, you, are, not, you are not saying give me this, this amount of money. That's very, that's very different. It's just like applying for a job. But this has to do with money. Where I put in this and I'm going to get that. The foundation, if you want to argue it out logically, people will raise so many, what about that, what about that, what about that? But the foundation of that is greed. And today, that's not a subject. It's been handled previously, so we are not getting into that. And so, we need to be careful with what entertains us. Now, the Bible says in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Under the power of any. Uh -huh. So, uh, we, need to, we need to, this principle here, it's very important. The principle is very, very, very important. Now, uh, just so that we don't have too much time, let's also get into um, movies. Movies, songs. Um, somebody says that, well, I'm a Christian, but... Um, I enjoy songs by 
these are um, these artists, that artist. Sometimes um, the person, it's not only the, the words the person sings, but the person is just not a Christian. Some people don't even believe in God, but we enjoy their music as a Christian. Is it right? Is it right to, let me start with Mrs. Edu. Is it right? Music, movies. Now, there's another trend which um, is so worrying, where people at weddings would come in, processional him, would sing um, songs like Muntu Yehoah Kwai Honyom, powerful, powerful songs. We do worship, we do praises, we bless it. What God has put together, let no man put us under. Right after that, we have the reception, the reception, and then, kum, 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 kum. We have the reception, and then we get into Atajwa, and then so many things. So, um, what, let, let's find out. Is it, is it really right, or it's, it's not anything, it's of no effect? I mean, it's, it doesn't affect us. Well, I think that whatever we take in as believers affects us. So it can be, it doesn't only have to be what we eat. Whatever we listen to, whatever we feed our spirits with, that is what we become. And so I would say that um, if, if you read First Corinthians chapter 8, it talks about if a, a believer, you, you be careful how you exercise your rights as a believer so that you don't become a stumbling block to the weak. So if you are a child of God, and for instance, your role model or you list, your inspiration is from a worldly musician, and then someone, even in your church, admires the way you are. Oh, this person is in my church. He is my prayer leader. He is a deacon in my church. And then when I see you on your phone, I always see this, those kind of music there. And what you are trying to tell me is that I can also... Because I am weak and don't actually understand the foundation, the signal or the message you are communicating to me is that that person is also a role model to you and you take inspiration from their music. So I am also allowed to take such a person as a role model. So even as a believer, if you do that one, you are misleading people to the other way. And Bible says that whoever does that, he said that when you sin against them in this way and wound their weak conscience, Bible says that you sin against Christ. And we don't want to sin against Christ. We want to be in right standing with the Lord. So I would say that it is not right because it's rather distract us from our purpose. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if your purpose, if you, underst if you truly understand the purpose why you are here on earth, you will choose models or you will take inspiration from people who can actually inspire you to get to where God actually wants you to be or get to where your purpose, the, actual, the will of God for your life and not be distracted. So I would say that um, such activities like listening to worldly music can distract us from our purpose, especially some of the lyrics. Yes. I don't know what's my father. Okay. Um, so it can distract. And she's saying that she says something very profound. Something very profound. And um, we'll come back to that. Something very, very profound. So we want to, we want to break for a short while. We have a few minutes uh, to end. And so we want to break for a short while as we will get back to you very soon. And I trust that um, we'll continue on this note. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we are back. So our dear sister talked about uh, the fact that whatever we use to entertain ourselves feeds us. It feeds us. So it's not just a kind of entertainment, but it feeds you. Elder, um, on movies, movies. Uh, one, for we as Christians, what we should uh, pay particular attention to is what the what my sister said, what we allow into us. And the devil being a smart person or crafty as the Bible uh, described him, most of the times comes to us as Christians subtly. So you realize that it is not 
so profound for which we can just say, no, I'm not going to take this. The devil won't come to you through pornography. Once he knows that you're a child of God, there is no way you are going to watch pornography. I use an example like Dan, Dan Brown's book, uh, Da Vinci Code, and the movie that came after. It, we watched it as a movie, but what it happened in the Western world, when that book came out and the movie came out, a lot of Christians, their foundations were shaken. Even when you listen to Marty Samson, the songwriter for Hell Songs, after being with Hell Songs for 20 years, produced most of their songs, one day just got up and denounced their Christian faith. Because they watched these movies, they read these books, they followed people who were Christians, later became agnostic atheists, who had written books that people just read, who had done documentaries that Christians whose foundations wearing that firm followed. So you are, we, are, we shouldn't just be watching movies for the sake of watching movies. Back to the Dan Brown uh, example that I gave. This was a movie that was done so well. It cleverly disputed everything about Christ, mm. even to the point that of the 12 disciples that Christ called, Mary Magdalene was one. And if the foundation of the church, which we Christians believe as had been built, or she being built on Peter. Dan Brown said that it was built on Mary Magdalene. If you're a young Christian who watches this, and you're not that firm in your faith, before you realize, now you start following some of the things that you heard from the movies. And that would confuse you more. Before you realize, you have fed your soul with things that you're not supposed to feed your soul with. And before you realize, you are off the track. Great, great, great. So, uh, much as entertainment is important to relieve stress. See, we, need to, we need to understand that whatever you entertain will surely feed you. And whatever you feed on, you become. And so it's, sometimes people say, it's just, it's just entertainment. You know, I'm just stressed up and I'm, I'm just doing it. No. Once it is an entertainment, it will feed you. It feeds you. You know, the eyes are a gate to the heart. The ears are a gate to the heart. So whatever we watch, whatever we listen to, feeds us. So we get entertained by those things. They feed us, they get into us. And then what we eat also makes us. And that's why the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, when God created man, that the devil came to the woman and said, has God said you shall not eat from this tree? And so right from the Garden of Eden, they are, there was a tree God told man not to eat from. And when we talk about eating, we're not talking about literally eating food, but we are talking about anything you take in, any information, any movies, any songs you listen to. They feed you. They, are part, they, they become part of you, and then they shape you, and then you become what uh, you watch and what you listen to. And so it's not just entertainment. I want to encourage you. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have too much time. We, we have just a few... Uh, minutes to end. And so, we want to encourage you as much as possible. Choose your entertainment rightly. Now, Elder, let me, let me, this is the last one. Um, let's recommend, what are some of the things a Christian can do for entertainment? What are some of the recommended things a Christian can do? What are some of the things you would recommend? And what are some of the things you also do to entertain yourself, personally? Uh, I'll start with a joke. I, yes. I, saw, I saw a little video, I'll call it a skit, of a woman who was teaching a one-year-old son some memory verses and she took John 10 30 the baby recited at a point in time whilst the recitation was going on the woman was playing uh, Shatawale's song uh, something high 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 whatever so the woman would say it and tell the baby to repeat and the baby was having problems then the woman just said uh, Shatawale come like Kakai, and the baby just started shouting, hi, 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 hi. Mm -hmm. All that I'm trying to say is, in as much as you put your focus on what you want to do, sometimes the surroundings, the surroundings might not even help. And subconsciously, you pick the things that are in the surroundings. So sometimes what I advise people is, just get your focus and get your focus right. Whatever that is driving you away, taking a chunk of your time, from living a holy life now becomes an impediment for you and as a burden. So for me, I like to play video games. 
Some say it's wrong. So I choose the video games that I play. I only play FIFA, which is football. I play, I set my time so that I don't get engrossed in it so much that it affects me. I read my novels, but before I read the novels, I check. There are some authors, I don't read their books because they put in subtly things of the world. Before you realize you are moving away, you are questioning so many things in your head. So I choose my novels right. As to movies, the moment you start the movies, and that's one medium that I, I, I want to tell my fellow Christians or young teenagers to really look at, the movies. You start the movie and you realize that it's so f common for a guy to kiss a guy in a movie. And we just take it like, oh, it's just a normal thing. The more you get this thing seared in your memory, it gets to a time when you even see it in real life, you take it to be normal. So it is what the devil feeds your subconscious. So for us, we have to guard against it. So James will tell you that flee from all appearances of evil. Anything you think has a semblance to evil, flee from, flee it. from it. So the right. moment you are watching it, and it might not be an advertised pornography or an advertised uh, incest movie, but you see a father sleeping with a daughter, I would advise that you can cut that movie short. short it's not again. going to help you. And just drop Great. It. Great. Mrs. Um, yeah, what, what, what do you think? Um, what, do you, what do you do to entertain yourself? And what are some of the things you recommend for young people to do? Okay. I personally, I love Instagram. And then I love Instagram because I've been wanting to build a particular brand for business. So being there, I've learned a lot on how to even increase your followers without having to use the other means. Learning how to use hashtags and many things. So indirectly, what am I saying? I'm saying that entertainment can be positive. And so we can learn from entertainment. So as life is a choice, so you need to make the right choice as a youth. So I personally, I, if you follow my Instagram, I follow men of God. I follow people. I want to learn something for mine. I make that decision. And my husband can testify. Anytime a movie is showing, when I come, I ask him, is this movie edifying? Or oh, if it is not edifying, we won't, I won't, let, we, we won't watch that movie because I feel it's just going to waste our time. Plus, we could use that to do another thing that could build us up. So what, in, indirectly, what am I saying? As youth, I want to challenge us that as life is full of choices, make the right choice. You can use entertainment positively to affect your life. The people you follow on social media, the inspirations you are going to draw from them. And also, as you want to be entertained, like Elder Riley said, before, because entertainment is full of pleasure, if you don't plan your time, it can take, if you can be carried away by the activities because it's full of pleasure, it is amusing, it is fun. So consciously make an effort that you plan your time, you plan your day, the activities for the day when you wake up. After your quiet time, you make time for entertainment, at least make time for other things, entertaining activities. So I want to recommend that entertainment is good, but it can harm us as well. So as youth, we should choose rightly. We should follow the right people. We should be selective on what is on social media. Social media can help you learn. And this social media can also unmake you. Thus, I want to encourage that we make the right choices on social media as a tool that can also help us for the future. Great. Mm. Yes. A little too. I yes. have a. I have, have just 30 seconds more. So. Okay, I have a principle that I share with my youth, which is the BAS principle. For everything that you are getting into yourself, ask yourself is it beneficial? Is it useful? Is it soul enriching? If it doesn't fit within this BAS, B U S, then drop it. Okay. So, beneficial? Useful. Useful? Soul enriching. Soul enriching. And then Mrs. Yabo also talked about does it edify? That's, these are very important things. So is it edifying me? Is it, inform, is it making me better? Or is it just wasting my time? I get to Facebook. I just scroll through, read so many things. Is it, is it, is it helping me? I, I am, what, what am I watching? Is it helping me? So let's, you need to be very selective. Selectivity is important for effectiveness. If we allow everything to go, we are never going to be effective. And so we want to encourage you, our viewers, young people out there, Everybody listening to us, watching us on Facebook, and then listening to us, 
that let us be selective. Now, we can't give all the principles and all the guidelines as to what to do and what not to do. But the word of God provides us with a framework that helps us to choose what is right for us as Christians to be entertained by. If you're a young lady, you want to get into the movie industry, you want to entertain people, ask yourself, should nudity be, should I go nude to entertain someone? Should I be profane to entertain someone? Think through all these things. Let's not only focus on money. For, for some people, once there is money to wait, I, I'm, I'm going into it. I want to encourage you. Let us be selective. Let us choose our entertainment, right? Because our entertainment will feed us and what we feed on will, 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 will make us into what we watch or what we listen to. The Lord richly, richly bless you. Elder Rexford, Asamwa Bedu, Mrs. Eunice Yebua, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we don't have too much time. Our time is um, almost up. We want to thank you for joining us. Uh, once again, Elder Rexford is the district youth leader for the Church of Pentecost Nungwa and also a risk analyst. And then Mrs. Eunice Yebua is um, the youth secretary for PRWC Graceland and also um, a law student at the University of Cape Coast. My name is Ebenezer Japon, the area youth pastor for Teshi Nungwa, and it's been wonderful having you around. God richly bless you. Now, we want to pray for someone watching us um, who is trusting God or who's, got, who's caught up in some kind of entertainment, some kind of addiction that is becoming a bother. I want to pray for such people. And then also offer you an opportunity to give your life to Christ. Now, uh, if you want to give your life to Christ, all we are saying is all captured in the framework of the mind of Christ. All we are saying is that Jesus is the one who helps us in all these things. You want to give your life to Jesus, you can say, Lord Jesus, I accept that I'm a sinner. You came to this world to die for my sins. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Come live in my heart. Help me to serve you. And let's all shout a big amen. amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for our viewers. We pray for those listening to us all over the world, people caught up in all kinds of dilemmas, all kinds of addictions. We ask that, Lord, your spirit will brood over them, O oh God. Cause us to be wise. Cause us to be discerning in these deceptive days. To know what we ought to do and what we ought to shun. We give you all the praise and the glory for your goodness and for touching our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God richly bless you. We want to appreciate our youth director, Pastor Ebenezer Hagan, and the wife, Mrs. Priscilla Hagan, for the opportunity given to us, all the national executive, um, um, national youth executive members, and then everybody watching us. Thank you so much. God richly, richly, richly bless you. So until we meet tomorrow, we are going to have a, a, another session. It's called Ask It, where um, you can ask any question, and the youth director will be there. Uh, Pastor Bafu will be around. We'll answer uh, your questions. Join us tomorrow and I trust it's going to be a blessing. The Lord richly bless you. Youth! Arise and shine.